Buongiorno. I'm Kati. I'm Ekaterina from uh, Protel, Hotel Software Germany. We are the leading um, German software developers for hotel industry. And um, actually, every day I use technology to give hoteliers around the world best tools for being their own booking channel. Every day we use technology to give travelers around the world best choices, best tools to being their own travel agent. And uh, now I'm here for an academic talk more. I'm not doing selling, I'm not doing marketing. I'm a developer. I'm working in the development of new products. And I'm here today to talk with you a free debate about ancillary services and products in hotel industry. Um, well, actually, I was working in Rome for Venere, for Expedia, some time ago. And uh, we had some very nice t-shirts yeah, for a marathon, I think they were printed, with run with me, Venere, and backwards, sleep with me, Venere. Actually, sleep with me is what most of the people, most of the travelers understand or used to understand regarding accommodation and hotel industry. It seems like things are changing. People are looking into new experiences related with the travel, with the travel either is business or leisure. So actually, I have one intro where I will present you the only three things I know and I'm sure about. And then we have several chapters we can talk. I'm looking into an interactive talk. I can talk your ears out if it's needed, <laughs> but I would prefer to have an open talk with you who know your business. It's everybody in the room in hotel industry, yes? Okay. So let's start until it sleeps again, whatever it's not a room. So first, first um, fact, we have hotels are different. They are small or large. They are individual or groups, family or business, spa, sport, city, there are hotels, villas, hostels, there are hotels in Germany, in UK, in Italy, but all want more revenue, less commission, and more data. In the current context of booking Expedia Duopoly, Alibaba looking to step into Amazon just stepping out of the travel industry. Google starting to sell rooms, even more meta search sites get, getting more and more important and getting more and more larger and larger share of the market. Hotels are left with very little in to improve direct booking or direct channel and getting more revenue and less commission. Well, direct distribution channel is not only about selling the room. It's also about selling ancillary services and products. And um, ancillaries are not only about the money and about the revenue. Ancillaries can drive important data into the traveler behavior. They can, ancillaries can also make a difference between a nine, one night stand in a hotel and a lifetime customer. Fact number two. We have travels that are different. We have single or family, business, leisure, relaxed or active, or young, major, or from UK or US or Russia, or, and they all have different preferences. And they all want, well, in marketing 101, product reliability, you learn to analyze love, longing and desire, as if we're a tool to sell a product. As far as we know, it's a simulation of brain tegmental area and cardionucleus. Those areas are also involved in major purchasing decisions. So a lot of researches are going on on how to trigger them directly. A fragrance, for example, or a particular sequence of notes. 
the ultimate goal, of course, is to find a method of making each given person hopelessly fall in love for any given product. We haven't reached that yet, but we are getting there. We are getting there. Fact number T. That will be the unforgiven. Technologically speaking, booking is getting more and more complicated and more expensive. Data in travel industry is exploding. In 2004, Google's total index was 200 terabytes of data. 2014, Expedia processed in one day 600 terabytes of data. 10 years later, Expedia, one single travel company, processed in one day three times than Google total index in 2004. What that means? A lot of more options for travelers to choose from. More online bookings, more online shopping, and many, many more options. Also, the way we are engaging with the internet is changing. We are moving for, uh, from a single device pull word to a multiple device push word. And a pull word means a person searching on his desktop. And this amount of search today, it's about 3.5 billion searches a day. I don't have exact numbers, but at the beginning of 2015, the push word was estimated three times the amount of pull word. Push word meaning also notification we get or all or of, of our mobile devices. So, actually I think, I totally believe we are heading to where Sergey Brin, one of the Google founders, said some, he wants to go. We are heading to that, part, to that moment where the information will just come to us. The right information at the right moment without even searching. It's not so unbelievable, it's not so far away. Think of what happened in IT, in internet, in the last 10 years or in the last 20 years. Psychologically speaking, life is getting more and more complicated. Multiple ta task segmentation, life segmentation, multiple, multitude of options we get, all made us to embrace commodities and to love consistency. So actually, a lot of travelers are, think, are thinking as Peter, uh, Steve Peterson from Forbes, he likes his travel as morning coffee. Consistent and affordable, uh, and fortless and predictable. What that means? Personalization. And also 95% of guests are truly believed that hotel, hoteliers will look into the new tech to offer them personalized experience. Logically speaking, we saw ancillaries in airlines, fast growing. And actually, Mark Rosenberg saw a very big point. In airlines, I charge a low price and then I charge up. In hotels, I charge the smallest price and then everybody expects everything to be included. That's not logic anymore. Economically speaking, we are moving away from a room-centric approach. Room approach. We are actually heading to inventory management, to a holistic approach where we have to manage all the inventory, not only rooms. And um, actually, my colleague tomorrow, Alessandro Cagliari from Serenissima, he will give a great talk in relation with uh, how to increase product, uh, profitability metrics and optimize for profit. Sorry. So, for 2015, for sure, we can call it the year of adoption in merchandising. Airlines already set up the trends, OTAs already implementing, or I've seen it in booking and I've seen it in other, in hotel OTAs also and travelers are benefiting. Where are, where, is, where are hotels today? So, from this point forward, I will ask for your collaboration. I will also present some numbers 
that may or may not make sense. Things inside without a care. Metallica quote. So, ancillaries, as I saw them, they are everything that makes a journey from normal stay, one night stay, three night stay, to a dream. Ancillary activities, everything that is extra sleep, can drive us to the Peter Pan's Never Never Land. We have the following option from now on. Question up to this point? Okay, we, we won't have the time to go through all of these subjects. Not the time for me to present it as yeah, one, a monologue. We could choose now to go through discussing what actually to enumerate the ancillaries. What I saw as ancillaries, as options, and what you have here, maybe different from a hotel to a hotel, for, from another view, and so on. We can go through adoption metrics to see who is there, who started to adopt it, what are the numbers, who are the first users, and what are the trends in hotel. A little bit about analytics and about best practices to implement, in my view, based on the research we made, based on the interviews we had with our clients, and based on the data that are included in different uh, research and reports external. Uh, by the way, at the end of the presentation, I have two pages of resources I used for this. If I don't know exactly which are, is, are the policies regarding sharing, but one-to-one, -one, this, this is my presentation. I can share it. If you are interested, please leave me your business cards on the table, and I will personally send it to everybody who is interested in So where shall we start? The room? The first? The first, to see where we can find uh, um, ancillaries, yes? Actually, that's just a big book with different items. Hotel accommodation can sell. Hmm. Okay. Generally speaking, and then we'll go on subcategories. We can cross sell, let's say, and upsell. Pretty much everything. Food and beverage, that's the most common already used. How many in the room are doing that? Are cross selling or upselling food and beverage in the in the hotels? Okay. Room services, in room services. And we'll have a lot of more. Room upgrades. This is something I call upselling. And I would rather keep apart not talking about room upselling because then that means we are going back to the revenue per average room sold and on the room approach uh, discussion. So you can upsell rooms, but that's not exactly what I see through ancillary. Spa, beauty, sport and health, retail, tourist experiences, transportation, mice, Mice, it's a great category to talk, but that's the subject of a full hour separately. And also custom hotel by hotel ancillaries. So food and beverages. Anybody thinking of what else we can sell apart of a romantic dinner or lunch? Apart of breakfast, coffee, cocktails, five o'clock tea not included into the room rates? Midnight steak, snake. I am a midnight steak person. I normally run through all the day, and when finally I get into my room and I get to rest myself, I will, I will, I will pay in gold for a midnight steak, steak, and just not to leave my room. And not all the time I get this chance. I'm staying in a beautiful hotel here in Florence. It's amazing. But I was just thinking yesterday when I arrived and today. They haven't tried to sell me not even one little thing, nothing. I have the mini bar, and that's all. Nobody asked me for a, ex we'll talk later, for a trip, customized trip, or selling me an event ticket or anything. They are very nice people, excellent services. Nobody tried to cross-sell anything to me yet. 
all-inclusive uh, domain pension, but normally you put this into the rate, and self-service bars and vending machines. Other items, in your opinion, we can upsell, we can cross-sell in food and beverages. The room? How many of you, you are up in your happy hour? Good, happy hour. Good. In room. Sorry. In room services. services. A bottle of wine or a basket of fruits. How many of you are upselling something like that? Nobody. In Germany, they used to. I mean, that's the second most used uh, ancillaries they try to upsell among our clients, among our hotels. In room bottle of champagne or in room ba a basket of fruits. Wi Fi. Do we, can we co still consider Wi Fi as an ancillary or should be moved into the basic, into the room price? Basic. That's also my opinion. I mean, it's, it's a normal commodity such as water uh, running or electricity nowadays. Still, in some parts of the Europe at least, Wi-Fi is a valuable ancillary to be sold, depending of from country to country, from region to region. In-room entertainment. Well, I've seen a lot of numbers regarding that, and some of them said we will not need TV in the room in the hotels. Other reports said, no, we are traveling, each guest is traveling with a lot of IT uh, devices, though they do prefer to see a movie on the large screen, even if they will connect their own uh, device to the large screen. Personally, I'm traveling with probably four devices, sometimes five, sorry, I'm a tech. But uh, do you have any data about your client or your guests? The average of devices they are using in the room? The average of devices they are, are connecting to the Wi-Fi? There are numbers we have to track. There are numbers we have to analyze in order to provide better ancillaries next step. Laundry, same time, dry cleaning, that are all news. Affordable minibars. Here, the key word is affordable. Because I am flying, I'm a fre frequent flyer. And I can buy a bottle of Coca-Cola with 2.5 euro, 10,000 meters in the sky. And in, I had a case in a hotel to pay 7 euro for that bottle. That's not normal. And a lot of guests will think, like I was thinking that day, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Uh, upgraded products beauty products. How many of you are trying to sell or are, are selling upgrading products? No? It's an, another category that works pretty well. It's among the favorites in Germany. Room upgrades. It's your... Do you try to upgrade a room to sell upgrades? No? Once you have a booking, yeah? somebody booked via OTA or via direct booking, do you try to follow up with upgrading the room? For 10 euro more, you can get a double the looks instead of a standard. That's a great part to get some extra revenue. Spa and beauty. Well, this works better for luxury and for um, that's not exactly for budget hotels, that's more for luxury hotels and accommodations. But maybe the case, that's luxury, uh, spa and beauty, that can lead to reservation. Anybody selling luxuries, like spa and beauty in this? Yes, do you, ha do you offer also uh, these services to non-stay guests? Yes, did you have a case of one whoever one guest who booked the spa and beauty lead to a night occupancy? You don't know, yeah. 
sport and health facilities. Well, that's mostly for leisure or not so crowded cities. I don't know if in Florence ever anybody is um, selling golf or sport equipment, probably bikes or scooters, personal trainers and so on. Retail, the little shops in the hotels. I spent, I, I was once in Milano, very nice central hotel, I can't remember the name, sorry. They have a very, very nice shop downstairs. Expensive, very expensive, but very nice. Well, I was not among the, the guests that converted there, but my colleague, she left a lot of money into that shop. Actually, uh, studies show that business, per, business travelers are less cost sensitive and more sensitive to the time. That means hotel shops and airport, airport points of sales are very good places to convert for business travelers. If you have business travelers, consider retail. From toothpaste to expensive uh, jewelries and so on. Moreover, in an American report, 46% of Americans traveling abroad saved half of their budget for shopping in destination. Half of the budget is saved for shopping. Okay, tours, experiences, and packages. That's your area here in Italy. How many of you are selling, are selling, not show, showcasing, selling, trying to get commission for selling tours and experiences? Yes? And no? And how it goes? It converts? Yes? Yeah. I mean, I would ask my, uh, the person from my hotel, the clerk, if I could, what I could get. Not just a bunch of brochures. They have to recommend me something, and the hotels have to care for recommending quality services, eventually adding cancellation, last moment cancellation to the packages to add a plus value even tickets and so on. Transportation. Well, I swear, next time when I'm going to Greece, I will book, I will ask the hotel to arrange a rent, to rent a car for me, not myself. There are cases and cases. From car rentals in the hotel to pickup services or parking lots. Everybody can make a little bit out of this. Parking is also it's not too much. It can be for four euro a day to, I don't know, in Amsterdam goes to 30 euro a day. How much it will be a parking one day ancillary here in, in, in Italy? Italy 25, yeah, Amsterdam was 30, 35, I probably the highest I, I personally experienced. But you want to have your car. If you travel by car, you want to have it parked in a place where you know you can reach it easier, won't bother to pick it up, and it's pretty much safe. Oops. Mice events. I said I will pass over. Everybody selling mice events? I, I have the case in Eastern Europe of seeing hotels making main revenue from mice not from room selling, from events, from renting for events, business events, personal events like uh, weddings and so on. Actually, they don't care that much for rooms as they serve for events. Um, again, that's the subject for a full talk. So we'll leave it probably for next year. <laughs> and um, hotel by hotel ancillaries. Give me something personal, your hotel can experience, can offer. I've been in Ljubljana. Unfortunately, I've been also to a conference. Fortunately, I've been to a conference. Unfortunately, I had no time for doing anything else. But my colleague, who had the time to attend other events, she, had, she told me she had a great experience having one day shopping package. That means personal driver, the same driver who took her to all 
were to be shopping places. The same driver who presented her the offers and so on, the same driver who was some sort of shopping advisor. Yeah. It was an amazing day, it was not cheap, but she was willing to pay for. Probably person, travelers coming to Florence or to Italy, they are willing to pay money for shopping. They are coming, a lot of them, for shopping. Isn't it? Yeah? How about give them an experience out of them? OK, leisure, seaside, or beach hotels, or mountain hotels, different items. Instant photo, this one, this ancillary, ate a lot of money out of my travel budget this summer because they had an instant photograph on the beach with uh, every day with some other character. And the kid, of course, find out where the photos were exposed and we end up buying almost all of them. Not cheap, nice memories of, again. And um, water equipment and so on for kids, kids care. Something else? Your hotel, what you would sell to make your hotel stand up, stand apart from the rest of the hotels? Nothing? Okay, you can think about that. As the hotel, that hotel in Ljubljana found a shop, that shopping experience can drive some more revenue, I'm pretty sure each hotel, especially in great locations like Italy, like Florence, how many are from Florence here? And the rest? Around, yeah? Okay, great. Um, do I have a mouse to, sorry? Uh, we could continue with the adoption, analytics, or best practices. The next one is adoption. Who is adopting? Who is looking into the ancillary? From, from the guest point of view and from hotelier's point of view. More numbers and some numbers I would greatly want to check with you. Shall we? Or look into another subject. Okay. So adoptions. Actually, as we said, it's a good day to start looking into ancillaries. A small detour, everybody knows. Just two slides, let me do that. Allow me to present you. The movement of ancillary cells in, in airline industry. Seven years ago, 23 airlines made 2.5, 2.45 billion in ancillary revenue. Seven years later, here, we are talking of 15 times this number, the revenue, for two, three times more airlines. Yeah. And actually, for frequent flyers, I think everybody can say it was adopted. It's the way it is now. I'm a frequent flyer of Wizz Air. It connects Eastern Europe with Western Europe. It's a low-cost carrier. A ticket can be as low as 40 euro, a ticket itself, though the trip will go to 100, one trip, because they upsell everything from perfect large seat, priority boarding, food and beverage, luggage, desk, desk check-in, flex, flexible transportation, merchandising during the flight, and so on. And they reported in ancillary revenue for 2014 35% of the revenue was made by ancillaries with an average of 34 US dollars per passenger. That means if the, if the flight itself is 40 euro, I get 30 euro more in ancillary for each passenger. Almost doubling. Of course, they are selling uh, loyalty cards. Yeah? They have two types of loyalty cards. I'm a fragrant flyer, I have both. <laughs> and people I've seen at last, at least people that are flying more than once a year are buying this, the entry level. Um, so 
I've seen seven years, ten years ago when, RC, when ancillary started in airlines. Nobody will try, will book a large luggage, yeah? Cabin luggage. Well, it's 35, 45 euro. I'm not going to pay for that. When they started to serve the food and beverages, almost nobody was interested in buying a coffee or a snack. Now, it's a rule. Barely you can see two, two or three person in a full flight who will not buy a coffee. As we said, we like consistency and we like a little bit of pampering ourselves, yeah? To have a little bit of leisure in everything. So, who is adopting? Who is going to, who is requiring ancillaries? As you were expected, fragrant travelers. Yeah? The more you travel, the more you start to appreciate commodities. The more you start to appreci appreciate your travel to be personalized. Yeah? The less you travel, the less familiar you are. But actually it's a trend, and I've seen this trend growing. People trying to, starting to embrace commodities and personalized experience. The age, as you also will expect, millennials are first. And gener Generation X following, yeah? Here, it's how they are interested, the bigger segments. Well, they don't have their own money, even if they are interested. <laughs> yet, yeah? But they are the next generation we are talking, yeah? We are preparing for this generation. So actually, young, younger are adopting personalized. Uh, we will see later, 82%, eight out of 10 millennials in 2014 took part in at least one event during the trips, one ex special event. They booked at least one event, eight out of 10. Segmentation. 10 to 20% of travelers said they are not in interested in ancillaries at all. What does it leave us? With 80 to 90% interested or having at least a little bit of interest. And even with 80 to 90, or even regarding the 10 to 20%, if I will quote Dara Kofroshai, Expedia CEO, never means until next year. They will follow. 80% of millennials declared they value personalization. That are numbers I'm just collecting here. And I'm asking you to follow, to tell me if they are true or not, based on your experiences. Sorry? 85 of travelers, for 85 of travelers, a customized itinerary is far more appealing than a prepackaged one. What does it mean? Give them the option to choose, give them the option to select what they want to add next to room, in our case, in a hotel case, yeah? Luxury travelers, and that's a very important segment here in Italy, in, in, in Florence at least. Luxury travelers, uh, that's American Studio also, they make up to 18 purchases prior to a trip what does it, with an average of $185 per purchase. What does it mean? We hoteliers can have part of this, try to sell between the booking and the, uh, between the, booking and the stay of the check-in. It's a great time to try to sell ancillaries. We'll have it later. Ten minutes left. 95% of guests believe hotel will look into the new tech, of course. And for the first time, it feels just right that OTAs are implementing it. That's booking.com screenshot took one week, one week ago for a hotel in Florence. Why do I see it as a writing? Of course, they will, they will gonna start selling it. But at the same try, time, they are training guests they are training guests into clicking. That are free ancillaries yet. That's checkout page. They are training guests. Well, it's not only about training now. Now, I've seen this one and a half years ago they started. 
with only with breakfast. Now they are upselling car rentals. What's next? Soon we're going to see here also paid items, ancillaries in hotel. They also show a very large interest in, in destinations, tours, and activities. Booking.com boat via tour. No, Booking.com uh, boat get your guide uh, just weeks ago. Also, uh, Priceline, the big mama of Booking.com, bought via tour one year ago. What does it mean? They are going to start selling tours and experiences implemented into your trip. Why? Because they already see and start to work on profiling the guests, the preferences. That's the future they are looking for. And I know exactly the person we could thank for this one in Booking. OK, what's happening? What do we have now? Um, let's go through this one very shortly. Question for the room. The per percent of hoteliers making up to 10% of revenues. Numbers, please. Room? Any guess from your experiences? 40% of hotel hotels said they are making up to 10%. Actually, up to 20%, from 0 to 24, there are more than half, a, a third, two thirds, 65%. In a report from uh, Travel Click, yeah, 35% of hoteliers declared they are making up to 25% from ancillaries. Sorry, <coughs> I already saw it. Sorry. Okay, how much per bed is made? Uh, how much ancillary spare bed in, uh, this, in accommodation is made? Well, uh, the number I had, it's 200 euro and it's from Staywise report. Personally, I don't find it. If you do a uh, math among the numbers, personally, I couldn't make sense of this number. Anybody else? Who knows how much a bed in your accommodation it's producing in ancillaries? Please? 300, 300, and you are, uh, look, your hotel? Luxury. Luxury, okay. Other numbers? So 300. It's more close from what I was thinking, yeah. Well, it's a difference, of course, from budget hotels who, prob who will make ancillaries out of breakfast, Wi-Fi maybe, and uh, some parking, bikes maybe to luxury who can make ancillaries out of everything, everything that we enum enumerated. A uh, luxury hotel who can address to another target. Yes? That's the same. Here you see the same data in a pie. Uh, how many of rev revenue managers in the room? Yes or no? We have revenue managers here? OK. So. How many of revenue managers uh, were looking to invest into ancillaries in 2015? Any number? More than half. And only 12% declared, said they will not invest in ancillaries. The, the rest were in the middle, to say so. OK. Probably we are heading. How much is made? How much revenue do hotels are doing from bed, from room sales? Please? 75. 75. OK. Yes, 75 is very good. You are doing better on ancillaries. How much, is, how much hotels are doing in food and beverages? 20, 16 in my data. It's very possible to make 20. But if you make 20, 75 in bed and 20 in food and beverages, that leave you with only 5% in other ancillaries, which is actually what I get. Well, this, here we have the area where we can work. And it's, the airlines show, up, show us it's a lot of room of improvement here. 
we can do a lot, especially upscale hotels, to improve this 6%. In Asia, the main revenue, the, the bigger part of the revenue is done by mice. Casinos are making up to 90% in revenue versus 10% in room selling. Okay, but casinos are, yeah, apart. But especially good destinations are having a lot of to build here. Same. Okay, careful what you wish. Yeah, we can go there, but how? Well, uh, if you will scan that, I was planning to have this here with you, but uh, probably that will be the last part bef before the conclusion. You can get this QR code and you can, vo uh, you can give me your insight. It's a live survey we are running today, I mean, during the last week, uh, on our website. You won't be directed to the website, you're going to be directed to the sur survey itself. And you can, tell, you can try to give me a little bit of your insights how you upsell your rooms and how you cross-sell your rooms. Because I'm really interested in seeing where, what are you looking for. And uh, if you're gonna tell me where you want to go, my, it's me to drive you there. It's, it's my duty as software provider to drive you where you want to go. But hoteliers have to tell us, how many of you uh, how many of, of your property management system or revenue management systems you are using it are including ancillary tr into the system? How many of you can actually track ancillaries right? Because everything I tried to figure it out, in all the systems I, I was looking to see how they are tracked. Some systems are tracking, some are struggling, it's like trying but not successfully. And some of them are actually uh, not tracking ancillaries at all. Shall I? Yes. OK. Well, um, I will just, there is a lot of talk, as I told you, please. Oops. Can you put me back on the last slide, please? Last two. I will cut it in one minute. Um, I was showing. Okay, so actually just to go to takeaways from today. It's a lot more. If you want to share the slide, please give me your business card and I will share it. Just to conclude, ancillaries means personalization. Ancillaries means transparency. Ancillary means more. Ancillary means uh, experience and people will always remember a great experience better than they will remember a great saving over time because memory remains wherever I may roam and nothing else matters. Thank you.